thought I would make a video, sorry for the angle, but I am not moving. Um, it's hard to face the camera and look up and make people dizzy. Um, here we go, sorry. So, I'm making this video because I have obviously got EDS, as I've mentioned a gazillion times, and all the other comorbidities. I have gastroparesis as well. <clears throat> Something I haven't really talked about much on this channel yet. Um, I'm not your average looking gastroparesis person, if that's a thing. Um, most people I know with gastroparesis um, suffered for either months, years or longer thinking it was something like IBS which I was originally told I had um until they get to the stage that they get so ill that they can't eat they end up either being tube fed temporarily or permanently um and they get very emaciated and look very thin and look very ill um but that's not the case for me and quite a few other people I know as well are not skinny emaciated but they are not overweight they're just a normal looking weight so they don't look ill um and the trouble is these days doctors um focus very much on your weight and obviously having eds and having a very restricted diet as it is and not be able to exercise to the extent i can lose weight because i'm the kind of person that's always needed to exercise like a lot to lose any weight at all like I could go swimming and that would not help um I used to run before I got my all my diagnoses if that's a word years ago and that really helped I lost like three stone or something and um running really helped but obviously then when I started getting a lot of pain and I was told hi DDS I was told not to run anymore because that's like the worst thing because the impact on your joints um <coughs> specifically because i was running on concrete oh, i'm so sorry i'm just so tired um anyway so 10 years ago oh, 10 years ago it was in 2010 eight years ago um i basically started getting the symptoms i've got now luckily now i know what it is um i felt sick all the time I knew I wasn't pregnant because I was not in a relationship. In fact, I'd never been in a relationship at that stage. Um, and every time I ate, it would either make me sick or I'd have severe diarrhoea. Um, my stomach hurt. I'd be very bloated. Um, what else? Oh, I had really bad acid reflux. Um and yeah and I just couldn't eat so after two weeks of this um I assumed it was gastroenteritis and I kind of got better um and that is the point that because I had two weeks of feeling so rubbish I was lying in bed all the time I became deconditioned and that's the whole roller coaster for me being diagnosed with POTS and EDS um Anyway, that was in 2008, nine time. So in 2010, I had the same problem, but it lasted a lot longer. I went to A&E. I lived in London at the time. And I went to Hammersmith Hospital. And they were like, you're very dehydrated. Because basically, when you... Oh, my cat just interrupted me. <laughs> She's very chatty and noisy. So anyway. So I went to Hammersmith Hospital and they said I was very dehydrated and that they didn't know what it was but they thought it was just acid reflux on its own and they had, like took me to the, I suppose you call it acute care ward, like basically temporary ward for people that they don't expect to stay in long. Um, and, uh, blah, blah, blah. 
Oh, they put me on IV fluids and anti-nausea IV and gave me some Gaviscon. And I did feel better. And so I thought that was it. And so basically they discharged me. And as I was leaving the hospital, um, I had to walk around quite a way to get out. And on my way out, I just felt immediately sick and found a toilet and was like nothing would come out it was like my stomach muscles were working but it wasn't like relieving the need to be sick and all that so I had to go back into A&E but the trouble was because I've been discharged I had to go through the whole A&E process again which seemed crazy considering I still have my wristband on and everything and I had to wait for like five hours to be seen and I was there with a sick bowl just retching and it was horrific I, I, I cannot even oh and all I remember is just texting my mum continuously going help I feel so ill but they lived you know an hour and a half away and yeah I eventually ended up being admitted to hospital and um, was there for about 10 days in the end because they said at first it was gastroenteritis and they pretty much stuck to that the whole time I was there even though we know it wasn't. Um, I remember the doctor came in and she was like, oh, because um, I said I hadn't been able to eat for two weeks and she said, oh, I've had gastroenteritis before. I couldn't eat for two weeks. It's normal. You can go up to three weeks without eating. Um, it's not important to eat as long as you're drinking. And I said, I'm really finding it hard to drink. She's like, well, you just have to force yourself. <laughs> so I was like... Um, and it was a horrific time. Um, I didn't, at the time, I don't think, make a pals report. I can't even remember now. But I should have done because at the time... Um, I think it got to halfway through my stay and I felt so ill. I hadn't eaten much, I hadn't drunk, I hadn't eaten anything for two weeks. And then the ten days I was in there, I hadn't eaten either. Um, I'd barely drunk anything, um, I didn't feel like it. Uh, they were giving me IV paracetamol because my head was really hurting. And IV uh, anti-sickness, they gave me IV cyclozine, which is where I learned can't have that because I lost my vision completely like it went blurred like someone had just put a tracing paper in front of my eyes and that lasted for like half an hour and then nurse was freaking out who did it because she'd not seen that reaction before and then one day they gave me I was desperate for water and they ran out of water jugs on the ward and they gave me a soup jug full of water and it tasted awful the water because it absorbed the smell of the soup and my mum actually visited that day and witnessed that and was absolutely fuming with that and then later that week a like um, agency nurse came on and was like wow you look really ill I was like I don't feel good at all and he's like asked about my eating and drinking and took my blood sugar and my blood sugar was two and he was fuming at the hospital and because he didn't work there he couldn't and I was almost at the stage of a coma because my sugar levels were so low so he immediately ran and he got me a carton of Ribena and he said drink this drink all of this now like and I was like I don't I don't can't drink he's like you have to and I didn't at that stage know um how serious that was now knowing more about diabetes through just research and uh, family uh, having it um yeah that's like two is very low zero is like you'll be in a coma so the hospital let me get to that stage um eventually through much talking to friends while I was in hospital um who have eds and uh, googling all my symptoms um gastroparesis came up again and again and I mentioned it to the doctors there and they didn't believe that I had it um and my parents came in and basically had a huge argument with the doctors because they were like look you're not getting our daughter any better she's getting worse she has all the symptoms of gastroparesis blah blah and some of my friends were like look 
because I had been diagnosed with EDS and POTS by then. Um, I think I was not under the care of anyone for EDS. I'd been discharged, but I was under the care of um, Queen's Square for POTS. So um, I think my parents said to the doctor they made her ring Queen's Square because that was my only hope to say, look, this is the patient, this is her illnesses, these are her symptoms. And luckily Queen's Square knew that you can get stomach issues with POTS but also with EDS. And so they forced my hospital doctor to prescribe Meprazole for the acid reflux and um, Domperidone to make my stomach muscles try and work. And I also was then put, also put on a whole load of other stuff. I was like on peppermint capsules and I was on stuff to make my stomach work. I lost count of what I was taking. And eventually I got discharged I kind of pushed for the discharge because we had a big birthday plan for my mum because she was 60 at the time and it was like two days before and I was like me and my dad had spent months planning it and I couldn't miss it and even though I was really ill I really wanted to go so yeah and that was really hard because I was so weak by the time I left the hospital my dad had to get a wheelchair to take me from the ward to the car because I couldn't walk and I remember going home um, because I was obviously then going to go back to the care of my mum and dad because I was living in London with a friend. Um, I was going to go home for a few weeks uh, to try and recover and build my strength up. And I literally couldn't get up the stairs to my house. My dad had to help me up the stairs because I needed to pack a bag and I couldn't rely on my dad to choose my clothes and get my pants and stuff like that. So... Um, but the trouble was I'd lost so much weight, I'd lost like two stone in that period of time I'd been in hospital and the two weeks before that none of my clothes fitted me, they were all hanging off me um, and it was horrible. And it took another two months to probably get to eating anything solid. Um, I was living off out pro soy yogurts, um, which were a new thing at the time because uh, a few years before my... Um, stomach issues I figured out from elimination process because I was put on the FODMAP diet that I had lactose intolerance and so I hadn't been having dairy and because I knew that made me very sick and caused diarrhea um but I lived off those outpro soy yogurts just for a few calories and to keep my sugar levels up um and they actually something that tasted all right it was like chocolate flavor they still do them and actually at the moment I'm living so basically uh over the course of several weeks I would have like a few bits of soups some mashed potato and gradually built it up so I was eating some soft food and eventually the meds kicked in because they take quite a while to work <coughs> and for some miracle I could eat again and then um, when I went back to London, I was like, I need a diagnosis. I'm sure this is gastroparesis. And of course, just the same as my EDS and POTS, nobody believed it. <clears throat> my GP wouldn't refer me for tests. They didn't know what to do. So the person who told me <clears throat> about the gastroparesis in the first place was like, this is the really good doctor who knows about it. But it was private. But luckily at the time, he was... Although he was based miles away from where I lived, um, he was only like about £100 for a consultation, which these days is super cheap for private consultations. And he was like, it sounds like you have it, but you need tests. And then I had to rely on my parents again, which I felt really bad because they'd paid out thousands of pounds for my POTS tests. My EDS was done on the NHS because... Luckily, my POTS doctor knew the connection with POTS and EDS and referred me to NHS side of things. Uh, and anyway, I had to have all these tests and they cost a lot of money. My parents had to pay, but they saw how ill I was and I couldn't carry on as I was. So I ended up having a thing called an echogastrogram was the most um, revealing test that showed basically they give you they do an ultrasound of your stomach first of all to see what's going on 
they give you a like clear-ish soup with it's kind of got texture to it um you get a choice of like two flavors like vegetable or chicken and you drink it or eat it or whatever you want to do with soup and after i think it's half an hour they re-ultrasound your stomach and see where the soup is and then track it for like 20 minutes and the soup was just in my stomach it wasn't moving it hadn't moved at all um and they could see it was moving very, very slowly. And they said that wasn't normal. And then I also had, I think, two other tests. One was um, you're given a radioactive like mashed potato and then you'll put through an MRI scanner and you have to lie in the MRI scanner for like an hour and a half. It's really not that pleasant. But the MRI scanner is constantly tracking where the food is because it's radioactive and how fast or how slow or if it's not moving at all in through your stomach and your bowels and again mine wasn't moving um very much at all and then the other one I had was um I was given some grated carrot which was really gross with radioactive liquid all over it and I had to eat a little bit at a time and then I had to lie on this really fancy x-ray thing which was like it was an x-ray machine but it was a 361 so you lay on a bed and it went over the top underneath and to the sides and it was x-raying my stomach and bowels I think I'm not really sure but that didn't really show much because the carrot didn't move and we already knew from the other tests that my stomach wasn't working so then that was my diagnosis went back to the doctor he was like yep gastroparesis blah 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 and over the years it's been very up and down I've had a lot of issues I've had um I was under a good gastro doctor at UCH in London and then when I moved here I was still under a gastro doctor but I found a really good one where I live uh Adam Brooks um and I connected with a lot of other gastroparesis sufferers and EDS sufferers and found that there was a good gastro doctor who understood EDS and gastroparesis at Adam Brooks. So that's where I may end up at the end of this week. Um, I've had, yeah, I've had periods of time where I've just felt very sick for weeks on end, not be able to eat anything solid and lost a lot of weight. I've had times where I've been constipated, like two years ago I ended up in Adam Brooks because I just hadn't basically pooed for like two weeks and it was so painful my stomach was bloated like crazy I looked very strange and I'm sorry if this video is choppy <laughs> I just had a call from Queen Square because I was supposed to go tomorrow for tests for my pots but not the best idea a in the heat and b my stomach's not functioning I'm weak because of it and to then put my body through a battery of tests is just not gonna work but they'll find them out that they're gonna reschedule um anyway i have no idea where i got to but anyway yes my last admission to adam brooks i haven't pooed for two weeks i at home i was i'd gone to the doctors i was using suppositories which would literally relieve a teeny tiny bit um but not anything else i was on laxatives on laxido and also movicol like alternated them and i had because for fecal impaction you have eight sachets in six hours and i was doing that and i did that for a day nothing happened i did it a second day nothing happened did it a third day and still nothing and that was like serious so um and i felt so sick obviously with all this stuff inside me um and i wasn't eating so i went to a and &E and they admitted me straight away <clears throat> and put me on iv fluids iv everything they could possibly get IV of my medications because I wasn't absorbing anything. Um, they did an x-ray and they saw I was severely impacted because my doctor was already had a um, a blockage, a obstruction or whatever, and I didn't, but I was severely impacted. So they had to give me an enema, which didn't work. Um, 
and then they gave me more Laxido and they just kept me in on IV fluids and like said they'd give it a week and if it didn't work then they'd have to do other things which I don't know what I never found out what because after about four days um, finally the laxatives worked um, but the trouble was then that I had so much of it built up inside me that it was like a horror scene I literally was backwards and forwards to the toilet like four or five times an hour with severe diarrhea and it was horrible and eventually when the doctor came around and asked you know every day they'd ask have you been to the toilet have you been to the toilet and I'm like no and when I said yes they were like oh you can go home now but the trouble is I always remember clearly my husband came to pick me up and I was getting ready to leave and then I had you know the feeling the build up in your stomach and I was like gotta go to the loo I was stuck in there for an hour because my bowels decided that the laxative would work and I couldn't leave the toilet because I was just like it was horrific anyway in those four days I got home and I'd lost for like four pounds of weight which was probably not as much well more than I was expecting I don't know what I was expecting really um but I felt better obviously because the blockage impaction stuff had cleared but I still felt nauseous so I was I had soups and yogurts for about a week and then started having soft food again um yeah and that was the last flare-up because they put me finally I was mentioned years ago on Prucalipride um it's other name is Reslor. That's what I take. And I started off, I don't know what dose, but it was too strong because it side effect would make me have diarrhea every day, which was not pleasant. So <clears throat> I went down to one a day and I take it. You can take it any depth time of the day, but I take mine at night because I feel it works overnight because my stomach takes so long to absorb all my meds <clears throat> that every morning I'd wake up and then things would clear. I wouldn't want to take it in the morning because if I'm going out for the day, I don't want to be like stuck, like needing to go to the loo really urgently. Um, and also on Dancetron is the stuff I take for my nausea. It's the only thing that works. I'm allergic to everything else and it's strong enough. But even at the moment, I'm taking four a day and they only give me like an hour or two relief. So, yeah. So at the moment, I don't know what's causing the flare-up and I think it's been building because for the last two, no, three weeks, four, I don't know how long, um, I, my appetite has completely disappeared. Um, the weather here is quite warm, so I just assumed it was the weather. People, even without gastroparesis, lose their appetite in the weather. I'm starting getting yellow under my eyes as well. I don't know what that is. Um... And then we went away to Wales for a week. I was fine. I actually just were like eating normally. Um, I had quite um, loose stools, but I assume that was because I was eating stuff that probably my stomach didn't like. And having no gallbladder as well, you have to be careful because you don't have the filter for the fat to your liver. So if I eat any too much fatty food, I get... Um, severe diarrhea and nausea so I kind of avoid fatty food if I can um but this week's just been <sighs> since Sunday like Sunday was fine I didn't have much of an appetite we had a barbecue um and then that's the last time I ate properly um Monday I think I had a banana and I just felt so sick all day I was tired I was like just I've been drinking loads because I want to keep hydrated especially in this weather um but that was making me wee a lot like three or four times in an hour and in my head I'm thinking well if I'm drinking all this but I'm peeing it out then surely it's not staying in me and so I feel quite headachey which means I'm dehydrated which always happens when I get a gastro flare up um so yeah so the nausea so far hasn't been bad this morning but my stomach really hurts it's like a 
ache, like a twisting pain. Um, yesterday I tried having a banana and within about 10 minutes I had very bad explosive diarrhea. Um, oh, and I should add that prior to that on Sunday I'd been constipated for three or four days. So I, and I couldn't go, I used the suppositories <clears throat> and that helped a little bit but not much. So I took the Laxido um fecal impaction dose and it took about 24 hours to kick in <coughs> and it worked and I was like oh okay but ever since then I've had the same kind of bowel movements as you do when you have laxatives um if I have anything solid so I'm able to I've been got some more soy yogurts and I'm able to keep those down but I've not felt like eating them so I'm giving it till the end of this week and if I still can't eat and I've still got this pain and I know I'm dehydrated so I really should go to a &E. luckily it's only about 40 minutes away and that's where my gastro doctors are but I need to go in the week so they're there because they tend not to be there at the weekends I've had so many a &E experiences I know if you go anywhere at the weekend they usually admit you and do nothing over the weekend because nobody's there and then come Monday everything gets done and I don't want to be stuck in hospital but I could be at home just feeling crap <laughs> so and tonight is so bad timing like the tests have been cancelled that I was supposed to have tomorrow and Friday tonight I'm going to see Queen at the O2 and that's like my favourite band in the world and there's no way I'm missing it, but the thought of going in a hot car all the way down to London. Um, we were going to have a really nice meal before the concert, but like my husband obviously needs to eat. But I've got to take my yogurts with me and my rehydration drinks and stuff. <clears throat> so it really sucks because I feel crap and my energy is like zero. So I'll let you know how I get on um, and if I end up in A&E I shall let you know because I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. Um, I really don't know why this has happened. If it is the heat then it didn't happen last year and it didn't happen earlier a few months ago when we got this hot weather so I don't know. All I know is I feel really crap. So anyway the life of someone with gastroparesis and I wouldn't wish it on anyone not even my worst enemy so anyway I'm gonna go bye thanks for watching everyone stay tuned and click the picture of me on the screen right now and you can subscribe to my channel please like the video and click the bell notification if you want to know when my next videos are put on to YouTube um, there should be a box on the screen where you can see other videos I've done happy watching